Uh, hi, who's this? Hey, Bob, it's Mike from Naples. Hey, Mike. Hey, I just have one comment and question, and I'll get off and let you answer. Um, obviously, I have a daughter in the same age bracket as your son, and I just want to say I just had somebody really close to me die suddenly, and as you have also recently, it gives you a, a new lease or perspective on things. And my daughter is very uh, stubborn and stuff, and I just, I got to swallow the bullet even though I'm wrong or right and she's wrong 100% and just go the extra mile if I want to oh. see my kid. And I, 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 hope, I hope you can do something like that because I'd hate to see this go on with you guys. Well, if you're, talking to, if you're talking about my relationship with my son, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I get it. You know, yeah, but your son's and, not on OnlyFans like this guy's daughter is. That's true. Yeah, that's okay. true. <laughs> well, um, and my, my, my hold on, hold on, was, sir. Listen, listen. So you're saying that you didn't have a relationship with your daughter. Somebody really, really important in your family and the overall deal and the overall family thing died, and you and your daughter are not talking. And it really, really just kind of puts things in perspective of you know putting things aside, indifferences aside. Maybe uh, accepting blame for something that you feel is not yourself, your, your fault, uh, so that you can be a family unit. Well, well yeah, kind of. No, yeah. I mean, so I'm, trying to get, have... I'm trying to get to what you're trying to say here, and I think, I, I think I'm feeling you. I think, I think I know what you're yeah, trying to yeah, say. Yeah, no, that. you're absolutely right. I didn't have no relationship with my daughter, just stupid things. And, well, and let, me I, just, I, let me just stop like... you. Let me just stop you in your tracks because— um, I uh, and I'm going to show, and this is a, something that I probably shouldn't do because it's very much a family matter. Uh, but I'd like it to be known, and and, like, and I think it'll stop this guy dead in his tracks by saying that you know I'm sitting here hard headed and won't accept responsibility for whatever situation may be going on between me and my son. And um, I have on my phone here, um, I he, I've he's blocked me on. Uh, I can't text him. I can't. It seems his thing. The only thing that he hasn't blocked me on is um, e is email. So I have emailed him on nine twelve of twenty two, saying I miss you so much. Nine thirteen twenty two pictures from five years ago when we were in Indianapolis at a convention. Um, nine twenty two twenty two. How much longer? I love you. Uh, nine thirty of twenty two. You are my son. I hope that I, I hope that you know how much I love you. Uh, 11, 10, 22, uh, I am always going to be your father. Don't ever forget that. I love you and I miss you. And then Friday, Thanksgiving, yet another family a holiday wasted without my son. And there they are, all in my scent category, all unanswered. Oh, and so man. I don't know what else I can do, buddy. No, you're. Do you, I agree that you're doing exactly what you need to be doing. Just don't ever give up continuing to do it the more non-responses you get because eventually he and my daughter will mature and they will see the light. But and I, and now don't get frustrated and, and stop and, doing it. And, Jay, I will get in trouble for even bringing this up. Oh, man, that, that because just his breaks girlfriend my heart. Because his girlfriend will be like, see, your dad just wants to make a, a big thing out of everything. Well, that's uh, his girlfriend. She well, seems like me. she's a source of all these problems, she is. Bubba. She I mean, is. I mean, I'm, I'm not even like I'm sorry Markle. to say this, and maybe it'd be out of line, but f her. She's got between you and your son after you guys struggled so hard to rekindle your relationship. You were doing so well, and then this crazy bitch comes in and starts putting a a a, a, a wedge between you and your son. F her. <sighs> sorry, you. dude. Okay, I had to get that off my chest. Well, it's, what a it's, piece of shiz. Well, Sorry, Todd. Well, that's how I feel, man. To let some chick get between you and your father is, is shameful. And especially what I've done for that kid. I know. And how do you like it now? Putting stamps on boxes. Hey, Bubba, I think you're doing exactly what we need to be doing. Just don't get fed up. Just He's a stupid kid, just like my stupid daughter. And eventually... Well, so what's gonna ha life. what's gonna happen when my mom dies? What's gonna happen when, as we all get older, things happen, and you didn't have a relationship, well, that, that, and you didn't have a relationship means, with your grandma because of this? He he won't he won't he won't he won't, re he won't respond to my sister's text. He won't. He's completely bla brainwashed. He's, <laughs> he's, big completely, he's completely brainwashed. Blitz, you saw exactly. anyway, th anyway. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Blitz, you saw how unhealthy it was. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, the final straw is when we had the uh, Indiana's whitest Triz Ash uh, wedding, and his girlfriend tells him he cannot be there for here. Tyler works for me because there's going to be girls here. Oh, come on. Like the whole Manson thing? No, hold on. Now, hear me out. And the girls that are going to be here, uh, yes. I saw them. Is Angie, who's 51. Right. And who's the grandma for all this. A nine-year-old, an 11-year-old, a seven-year-old, and the bride and Anna. Real risky. That's, that's who, and so Tyler asked me the night before, okay, Dad, can I take tomorrow off? I'm like, no, you can't take tomorrow off. You're going to be right in there where you're supposed to be, and you can tell your crazy girlfriend that she needs to stop being so crazy and insecure because the bottom line is if you can't, like, I'm not, we're not going to even start this precedent. If it was wing house girls or girls a strip, I could, it's, it's, it's Indiana Wizite Triz getting married. You might have to run a remote camera, which we didn't even make them run. We did it. We figured it out. Yeah, we just had it set up. So it's just like, it's just it's like it's ridiculous. You know what's sad is that we, we literally, when we were about 14, 16, and 18, Stevens always had this weird wisdom, and we had a grandfather who never spoke to his brother over a woman for 50 years and they ran a business together and they literally didn't speak to each other and so Stephen at a very early age said we're never going to let a woman come between us and our families and we're never going to abandon our parents and it's, it's just one of those things that's been a constant throughout our lives we've all said and done things we didn't mean to do to each other and we always forgive each other, and we always remember we're Sumo blood, told me a year it's ago. it's just sad. Sumo, it's just sad. Sumo told me a year ago. I'm telling you right now, man, that is not a good thing going on. I go, what are you talking about? And he goes, because I go to bed early. It was two years ago when Sumo was staying here well, at my apartment, and Tyler lived with me. And Sumo, got, and Sumo stays up. He, you know, he stays up and watches TV and would see Tyler come in from you know visiting uh, his girlfriend. <laughs> And I'm like, and I, I was already in bed. And I go, well, what are you talking about, Sumo? He goes, he has to FaceTime her the entire time he leaves his house, driving across the bridge until he gets to your apartment, up into his bedroom, and in bed, he has to FaceTime her the entire time. What? Yes. I go, Sumo. He goes, no, goddamn, I'm telling you. I've seen, it, I've, seen it the last, I've seen it the last three nights. I've seen it the last three nights, and I'm like, oh, my God. Tyler, what'd you help? I'm like, I, that doesn't seem, you know. And then I asked Tyler. He's like, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like, oh, man. It's just, so anyway, um, it's, I've been, I'm the bad guy. And um, it's all my fault because I'm impossible. And, and, and I just think of, like, probably... And if I was to be totally honest, this isn't a topic that I was really going to talk about, but I have Jay and, and Dan and, and Blitz and everybody in here that really tru- truly knows the timeline that I'm going to talk about here. But if you talk about the day that Tyler was born, which was in 2002, 2001, I think, let me, check, let me check my arm. Yeah. Check your arm. Check my arm. <laughs> Don't check the wrong arm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that an 01? Yeah. Is that an 01? Yeah. yeah. No. It says the coordinates. It's yeah. weird. It says 02. <laughs> was he born in 02? Yeah, it says 02. Oh, yeah. All right, so. Oh, you can see it now, clear. <laughs> I just totally made the bed. <laughs> <laughs> totally just made that bit with my notched out nose. Woo! <laughs> Stop touching it. I know. He's so bad. I, I'm thinking about just letting it go, Dan. Oh, I'm having a little bit of a. Uh, I got a scar Fire above search. my eye, Dan. Uh, you know? Yaquim Clem. So, from the day that kid was born, I've done nothing but try to be the best dad I could be. In fact, to probably to the detriment of relationships that I had with other people, businesses that I had with other people, you know, uh, wives and girlfriends and everything. I put, you know, on when I should have been, when I was making really, really good money, I should have been Bubba J. Diaco and traveling with my wife. I had a plane that I was partners with you, Jay. And Dan and Dan and Steve, we had a plane. True. And I was the le- I used it the least uh, with regards to outside of Tyler's racing. I used it. That's all I used it for. 
I never took my wife and I to the Bahamas or to the Keys or anything like that. I was concentrating on my son so much. I every spare minute and spare dollar went into, you know, his racing and and quarter midgets and traveling and and I completely You literally put thousands of hours and literally hundreds of thousands of dollars millions, towards that. Millions. You bought a track. People, if they you bought a whole track. Yeah, I mean so and I was super dad. And I wanted, and I lived vicariously through my son because my dad never did any of this for me. And I'm like, you know what? I want this kid to just be a great kid. And he was super, he was such a great kid and so polite and so nice and everything. And I, I sacrificed so much for him uh, that, that my life would be a whole lot different had I just been a normal dad and participated in, you know, stuff, but not got into it, you know, wholeheartedly like the way I did and just you know been a regular quarter midget dad or a regular baseball dad or a regular basketball dad and I bought a lacrosse stick and a helmet I didn't buy a track right and and, and <laughs> it's a little different commitment you know and the reason why I bought the track is because well Tyler's nine and he right. has and he has the skill set to run cars that you regularly have to be 16 on to run because no track's gonna let you for insurance purposes run a 360 sprint on their race car on their on their track facility you're not gonna let a nine-year-old but if you own the track you can't sue yourself and and you're right i spoiled them i spoiled the kid and i'm paying for it now so the first piece of ass that comes along and tells him your dad is impossible and your dad's mean and your dad has this kind of rules and those kind of rules and oh my god you get thrown to the curb and I have not spoke to the kid since February. He told me in February to pack sand, and I haven't seen him since. Or February? Her. Yep. Oh, my God. And, 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 and just in full disclosure, I'll go ahead and tell the story. We were driving to the track. I've never told this story. I needed some content today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't give you enough. Yeah. Prep. Mm. Cut this one up, Rhett. What you <laughs> my notch nose. Thanks, Mike. It's my notch nose. <laughs> yeah. We were driving to the track Stop. in February, and um, I, she was, uh, you know, February, we get real busy at the track, and, uh, and uh, she was helping answer questions that we got from the track's Facebook page, people that were asking questions, you know, how much is it to camp, how much is it to get in, and so I made her, me and Tom Bean, made her an administrator on the Facebook page to ask, you know, answer questions, and it was going great. And um, Did you guys give her a dollar or two for that, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I was paying her a hundred bucks, a uh, hundred or two hundred a week. Okay, something Great. like that. Okay, I, I don't know, something like that. We were paying her something, and um, and so she, Tom Bean, also occasionally will answer questions as well. So we're driving up to uh, the track on a Friday. He's supposed to race that Friday night. Open wheel modifieds uh, against Kenny Wallace and you know Rudiman and all the big guys. And um, um, I ask her, "Hey, um, why aren't you answering any more questions on on the Facebook page?" And she goes, "Oh, I quit." And I go, "Well, what do you mean you quit?" She goes, "I'm not doing that anymore." And I go, "Well, that's news to me. Don't you think you should have told me?" And she didn't. She didn't answer. And I go. Again, don't you think you should have told me? And she didn't answer. I said, well, can you at least tell me why you quit? And she said, um, because I answered a question, and then Tom Bean came in an hour later and corrected it. And um, I didn't. I go, I go, I go. So I go, well, well hold on. These kids can't they, stand any correction. They call it, like, there's a term for it. It's like a passive quitting. We had an employee, Dan, that just didn't show up. I know. Quiet quitting. She did, quiet quitting. She just didn't show up at a law firm. So I'm like, um, well, no, hold on. What was, what was Tom, was the information that Tom gave him correct? And she goes, eventually it ended up being. I go, okay, well, what's the big deal about that? I mean, the owner of the track came in and, and like, what's, what's kind of the big deal about that? Did he say anything to you? Or anything? She goes, no. So for the entire ride up there from Tampa to Ocala, she didn't say a word to me. Wouldn't speak a word. You know how uncomfortable that is. Like they're in the back. And you're asking her questions. It's peace not. for me, but <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> but it's Dan's life. <laughs> uncomfortable silence talk. is what he craves. <laughs> and so we get there, 
And, and, and the story has never been told, and I'm sure her mom and her dad, everybody, they're all going to make a big deal about it. And Bubba's using his bully pulpit to bury the kids, and doesn't he feel so strong and special now that he's buried the kids and they feel so bad? No, you know what? Your kids are adults. They're adults. And I've, I've not said anything <clears throat> since February. I've been holding this in since February. And my mom and my sister and everybody's tore up about it. The, just the lack of, just, just the disrespect and lack of communication is just, I, I don't know, it's, it's to the point where I think I need to talk about it. And I like to talk about it, especially when I got other people that will set me straight, other parents, Jay and Dan and Lummy, and other, other um, you know, mindful people and Anna and Blitz, that if I'm, if, if I'm being out of line or, or telling a lie, or because Blitz knows the story inside and out, or embellishing something or not being fair, but you'd step up and say, no, nah, that's not quite how it went. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you would. Well, I think you can look at this from two perspectives too. I mean, as a child, you know, Anna has a perspective that, I mean, we all have a perspective from both sides of it. Those of us that are parents and children. And I just think about, you know, the respect we have for our father. And oh, God. I just, you know, it breaks my heart, Bubba. You that breaks my heart. Can you imagine, you know, your brothers, Dan, can you imagine, and, you know, Candle and, and, and Krista and Romina all come in different shapes and sizes and mentalities and, you know, just they're all three different people, but not a one of them, not a one of them would be allowed on your guys' behalf to get between you and your father, Jay and his father, or Steve and his father. Nope. Because, or the brothers. or Because the, or the, the other two would say, bro. This, you better put this to a stop now. Mm-hmm. Well, so anyway, um, we get to the track about, you know, about noon. Now, Blitz, I got a big race that night, a big open wheel modified race. Tyler, his car's there and he's working on it and him and her are working on the car and stuff like that. And, you know, I have like a fifth wheel RV there. And there inside the RV, Tyler and Ace and I'm parked right beside Keith Koontz. It's when the USAC midgets are there, Blitz. Yeah. And Keith Koontz, you know, is a good friend of mine, Indiana guy. And probably within the midget world, he is the Michael Jordan of midgets. He's, you know, he's the he's probably the greatest of all. Christopher Bell's driven for him. Uh, Kyle Larson's driven for him. Rico Abreu's driven for him. You know, Levi Jones. Like, he's he's the star maker of midgets, period. It's who mm-hmm. Buddy Kofoy drives for now. He's Toyota backed. Like he, you know, he he shows up with nineteen midgets. Mm. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, twenty. There, 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 there might only be thirty midgets in the entire. Oh nineteen of them are his. And so, I'm on the grader grading, and and if anybody knows anything about when I'm at the track, when I'm on the grader, you leave me alone. Yeah, like. Don't call me, don't text me, because I am in a zone, and I'm trying to get this thing graded properly, and you really got to be paying attention. Because you, you take two, three inches of track, too much material out, or, or it's just it, it, it's just a very, very, you just got to really be in tune. Well, the Merch Crick knows not to ever bug me when I'm on my grader. Next thing you know, my phone's ringing, and it's the Merch Crick, and I, I'm like, oh. What do you want? So I, <laughs> you got to slow the grader down, stop it, blitz, turn it, you know, down to idle. Yeah. I go, what? What? She goes, I just want to let you know, if Keith Koontz just came by. I, she was, poor Eric, poor Erica was cleaning the bathrooms. That's a hell of a woman. Yeah. Right there. Ride or die right there. Yeah, yeah, I take her to the track. I'm on the grader. Hold and on, she's cleaning the track bathrooms, by the way. <gasps> oh! Yeah. Right. yeah. She's awesome. <laughs> Not yeah, just she's cleaning not, the bathrooms. She's not cleaning the fifth wheel bathrooms. Yeah, which, you know, yeah, yeah. She's cleaning the track bathrooms for Tom and I. Right. Because she's just a really, really cool bitch that just jumps in and gets it done. And she goes, God I just, I just want to let you know that Keith Koontz just walked up and said that there's a whole bunch of... Now, Keith Koontz was parked right beside me. She's away from the RV, and Tyler and Ace are in the RV. And she said, Keith Koontz just flagged me down in the, in the pits and said that these two are just carrying on, screaming and crying, and there's all kinds of ruckus going on in your fifth wheel. And she goes, what do you want me to do? And I said, well, I want you to go in there and tell them both to shut up and to and to stop because, you know, now I got people in the pits. Now, Dan, I had just talked to Keith Kuntz 
two days before that about renting a chili bull ride. Now, Blitz, for, for Tyler to for, drive? For Tyler. Right. Wow. Now, I had talked to Steven. You guys don't know this. I talked to Steven. I talked to Mark Tate. I talked to Tom Bean. And I talked, I was going to, you know, probably talk to you, one of you two. And I had raised the money because it comes with a price tag. And now, if you know anything about the Chili Bowl, Blitz will tell you Keith Koontz has probably won, what, seven of the last 15 Chili Bowls, if not more? That sounds reasonable. He he's the uh, he brings fifteen cars, and there's a bidding war. To, to, I mean, like you can have all the money in your world, he may not let you drive. There's he only has fifteen cars he can take to the Chili Bowl, so he picks the fifteen best people. So two days he'd been there all week. Two days, I, Keith is 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 my buddy, and so I talked to him. I'm like, and if I was going to put Tyler in a Chili Bowl ride, I was going to put him in a Keith Coons ride. You just don't put. I mean. You just don't do it. You just don't, you don't send him out there in anything else but. So I talked to Keith Koontz two days prior, Dan, and, and finagled. I said, Keith, if I can come up with the money, can I get, can I get Tyler a chili bowl ride with one of your guys, with, with your team? And he goes, I'll tell you right now, after we get out of Florida, which means after he's done with my races and I get back home uh, to Indiana, call me and I think we could probably get it done. Oh, nice. And I'm like, oh, my, I mean. That's two days before this event. Yes. Now, did you tell Tyler about this? No. Okay. So, no. So, I go, him and Ace are just going crazy, yelling at each other, just, he's crying. So, Erica goes up and tells them both to be quiet. Well, she tells Erica, you're not my mom. You need to shut the F up. You don't know what we're, we're all, we always figure our problems out. We just argue differently, and and I told Eric, I said, well, you're making a scene. For right. It's unhealthy, too. You're making a scene at your dad's business, okay? So I'd be quiet if I was you. Well, uh, she this this girl goes on just to cuss uh, Erica up and down. Tyler's crying at this point because she has threatened to leave. Uh, 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 Ace has threatened to leave. You, I'm leaving. Or like breaking up, or well, I, at least leaving the facility. Okay, they're gonna have to which, like FaceTime for which, two hours which, now on the drive yeah, home. Yeah, well, 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 he's, <laughs> hey, I'm crying. Hey, hey, I'm fixing to take the. I'm, taking, I'm fixing. I'm coming out of turn four here. I'm fixing to take the checker. I'm gonna have to put the phone down for a minute. <laughs> you FaceTime during the races? Yeah. So I tell Erica that's the greatest news of all. Have her go home because I need his head in the right space. He can't. You can't have your head all, I mean, you're not dealing with soccer here. You're dealing with 800 horsepower open wheel modifieds that could kill you. If, right. you're, if you're not, this isn't a sport where, you know, you're a little upset, boo-hoo, Willie, my girlfriend broke up with me. No. This is a sport that could kill you. Right, you even if they're 10 deal. years married and have children and they're having a fight like this, you'd come in and say, dude, not today. He's having a race today. Right. Guys, tomorrow. Dude, tomorrow. Yeah. Right. It's so dangerous. The game. Period. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys participate in a sport that's equally as dangerous. That no, if your head, if Candle just blew your spot up, Jay, and had you just completely sideways, it would be, uh, it would not be good for you to get in a race car. Dan Wait, pulled but, himself off the track three weeks ago. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. It was just two. That's weeks just ago. by getting stung by a bee. No, yeah. I, we, we, Dad, <laughs> we Dad was getting sick, I'm just and kidding, it was yeah. enough of a distraction. I'm like, I cannot go on the racetrack. I called I, him and I, I said, "Here's what's going on. I yeah. Can't do it." So, so. She then says, well, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. And Erica goes, yes, you are, because I'm calling your mom. So Erica calls her mom, and her mom is as impossible as she is, and says, don't make me come get her. If I, if I come in get her, this is a, and I've never talked about this on the air. But she, now, Tyler, why we had our problems earlier on, it was, it, he lived with his mother in Ocala. And one of the reasons why he decided to move to Tampa is so that he could be closer to his girlfriend because his mom didn't like this chick. Huh? She was quite the visionary. <laughs> <laughs> so Aislinn's mom tells Erica this. If I have to come pick her up, you can tell Bubba that I'll do to him what I did to Jenna. Whoa. And, what was that? Well, I've never no seen, I've not seen him since that day. And so she uh, came and picked them. So, she, so what she did was she ruined Jenna to Tyler? Uh-huh. 
And so she just ruined you to Tyler? Yep. Wow. And she came and picked up not only Ace, but she picked up Tyler. Hmm. And I've not seen him ever since. What's that fruit tree thing? Fruit what? doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, well. So I, <laughs> I sit here and struggle. I sit here oh. and struggle. Uh, I, I, and Blitz, I, I want you to call me out. What part of the story did I embellish or not tell the absolute Yeah, I mean, truth? obviously I wasn't there, but that's, you know, that's the way I heard it. I, you know, I. Well, you've heard it from multiple people. Yeah. So, same story. So. But when I got Keith Koontz coming to my girlfriend to tell me that you need to calm your kids down and you're in, inside, you think that guy is going to give me a ride now? Hell no. In fact, I, I saw him right after and he's like, hey, you know, sorry, sorry about your boy. Which is the same as saying. <laughs> no dice. Right. True. Yep. Sorry about the chili bowl. No, he, he didn't say that. He said, well, I'm sort of, he said I'm, yeah, he, yeah, you might as well. He said, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about your boy. Which is the same thing. Yeah. Which is don't call me in Indiana because I don't want to tell you no. Right. You got things to pay attention to right so, now. Boy. Supposedly he's doing landscaping. He's working in landscaping now. And they're living happily ever after. That's a shame. And I, and I, and I have, you know, and I, and so I make attempts every couple weeks, sometimes daily. Please stop this. Can you, can we please talk? Can we please have a relationship? Can we, can, can we somehow, can we somehow figure this out? I sh Blitz, did I not, I, I show, I showed, I sent. Mm -hmm. every, so that's that. Hmm. And I'm, I'm sure Dan, now, now this in itself, Dan, will be propagandized against me by her family. But meanwhile, the racing community, every everybody in the racing community has come to me and said, you know what, bud? You did your best with him. You gave him the best stuff. You bought tracks for him. You, 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 nobody faults you one bit. We all see exactly what's happening. Didn't... didn't uh, I didn't no, I, no Rick, I thought Rick James said I thought he said cocaine's a hell of a drug. I was I thought he said vagina was a hell of a drug. <laughs> no, that was Danny. <laughs> <laughs> the Bubba Radio Network will return after this. You know, I feel like maybe the uh, last break I talked about was probably you know probably not cool. But that's what makes, you know, our show our show. And sometimes we talk about things that we probably shouldn't. And it's it's tough to do what we do when you have something that big on your mind for so long that you have to suppress. That you can't really talk to anybody about. I mean, I can talk to my mom about it. And I can talk to, you know, my sister about it. They've been, uh, Tyler won't communicate with them either. And and then what's even worse, What even what, what's even worse is the fact that you don't really know how well he is. He okay? You know, yeah, is, you're just is, generally worried and concerned about him. You know, like what's he doing for Thanksgiving? What's you know, like what? Uh, I've been told that he lives with with her parents. I don't know anything. I'm not allowed to know. And and, and it's like over what? What what did I do wrong? I I asked your girlfriend to leave my racetrack when she had your head all messed up. And her mom said that if she did have to come pick her up that she was go going to ruin my relationship with my son that happened that sucks you know like i just i just i just and again to sit here every day and to act like you're in a great mood and, and i usually I, uh, historically i am i'm in a good mood i have a lot of things to be fortunate for and be thankful for but the, but the one thing that every one of us fathers knows, and especially us fathers who have sons, as there's three of us, you when you are not communicating, can you imagine, Jay, you're the one that is the closest to having a son, my son, can you imagine not, have, not having a relationship with Trey? No. No, and, and the truth is, if that caller hadn't called... You know, you hold these things in, and a lot of times you don't even tell Danny or me these no. things until you expose it on the air. And so this is, I knew before when you were having struggles, and I knew you guys weren't talking, but I didn't know it was like this. Yeah. And so the answer to the question is I, I would be mortified. Oh. My heart would be broken. I would have a void in my tummy, and I would just be spending, like I know you do because now that I know what's going on, 
I know how you think. So it's every morning, it's every night. It's I mean, I know how it goes for you. It sucks. Yeah. I'm so sorry. It's the worst. And so, you know, I have let it go. And I don't want anybody to blame Mike uh, for bringing this topic up. Mike actually had a pretty valid point, and that is... He did. Try hard. And that is, one, try hard. He didn't know how hard I've been trying. But two, you know, make up with your son now because he just had somebody in his in, in his immediate family die and nothing's worse than a death that a person in your family is not going to participate in or grieve or even know about you know what if my mom who is his grandma would die during this little spat that we have the cycle of life is such an important part of growing up as a young man and i'm showing my son right now as we're dealing with these life issues these real life issues that happen and for him to uh, to miss those opportunities to see what it takes to be a man and far too many people are afraid to say that word you know there's a, there's such a thing as being uh, it's toxic masculinity. How about honest masculinity? You can be an honest masculine man and, and do what your responsibilities are as the man in the house. And that that's not the, the lessons I'd be teaching my son. Yeah. And I know that's not what you're trying to teach your son. No. And, you know, I'm not just a factory worker and nothing against those that are. But my I have to have a mindset in order to come in here and to do the the show... Uh, so that it's as entertaining as it can be for everybody. And you know, really, quite frankly, as much trouble as this potential show or the information that I just just decimated or gave out will be to me potentially down the road, as I'm sure I'm going to catch all kinds of crap. But it was very honest to God. It felt good to get it out. Is as, as Cathartic. Mu- yeah, mm-hmm. it felt so... Leth- it did. It, as, as much havoc as it may cause, I didn't lie. I didn't embellish. I didn't make i didn't try to go over the top to make her look bad or let's be honest men aren't aren't the best at being honest with their feelings and saying things out loud and uh what who i'm most sad for is my mother because my mother it's her only grandchild Mm -hmm. and she i mean my mom absolutely just loves him she's awesome and she and she can't and he he has not spoke to her since, you know, February as well. What? And so it's just, it just sucks. It just sucks. And why can't you have a relationship with her family and, and their family be cool enough to let you have a relationship with your family? You, obviously, we don't get along. And obviously, and anything short of your girlfriend apologizing to me and my family I'm not interested in hearing anything from that side of the family, quite frankly. You guys, the, it, it, it has done so much damage and wrecked so much unnecessary havoc. And, and what's at the brunt of the, like, what's the issue here? It wasn't like, you know, there was any violence or any, any yelling or disrespect or, or anything like that. It was, it was Erica coming... Uh, I, I, I guess you can't correct her, Ace. She's uncorrectable. You uh, now, Eric has Erica has every right to walk into that fifth wheel on my racetrack and tell as an as an adult and as my girlfriend for them to knock it off. No doubt. And I guess that's where a lot of the problems comes. That uh, Ace feels Erica shouldn't spoken to her in that manner. Seventeen year old. Well, well the same thing holds true to her. Did she say to go f off? Yeah. <laughs> or shut the F. I mean, what? You don't talk to your elders that way? And and, and although this is illegal, and I'll probably really get in trouble for this, Eric here recorded it. Who? Oh. I know it's probably illegal. It's a two-party state, but go ahead and sue us. Because I, 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 I when her mother tried to start saying, Jay, oh, there's no way. I go, oh, yeah, well, hit, go ahead, Cheech, hit the tape. And I hit the tape. Spin that S. Spin Mekhi that S. Pfeiffer. And, and it was her. And it was her daughter saying, "Oh, I don't give a f what you think. You don't f and know nothing about the way we fight. We fight. We handle it ourselves." Mm. You get the hell out, yeah. So anyway, son, I've sacrificed a lot for you, my friend. 
and I love you, and I'll always love you, and I'll always be your dad, no matter, I should be your first phone call when you really, really need some help. And I hope that I am. I hope I'm always your first phone call if you really need some help, because I won't ever abandon you. And I hope that someday you and I soon can have a relationship. I don't know that we'll ever have one like we used to, um, but, you know, I hope that we can at least be, that can have a relationship nonetheless. And then they, they use against me a lot, Blitz, that the the negative people in Tyler's life, well, your your dad never really had a relationship with his dad, so it goes par for the course. Don't start comparing me to him. Right? Like, it's not even, please. Yeah. I sacrificed everything for that kid to have the best. My dad wouldn't buy me a 10-speed. <laughs> <laughs> for real with the curved bars my dad wouldn't buy me no, my dad's only focus on life was his car collection and if it didn't involve his car collection or me out there water sanding or doing something like that you know, Tyler quite frankly couldn't have handled being raised by Doug Clem so don't bring me up that I'm Doug Clem your track is your car collection. You know what kind of car collection you could have amassed over oh. the years with all the money that you put into tracks and cars and, and quarter planes. midgets and planes and gasoline and fuel and hotel rooms and meals and pit crew and tires and Jay, brakes. I could have a car collection. You'd have one that rivals mine. I was getting ready to say, I could have a car collection that could be equal to yours. And I, and, and I know what type of car collection you got, buddy. You'd have uh, it better. Honestly. Hello. Yeah, I was just going to, you know, like, showing on the parents, too. If they're having a fight at your track, and that kid's getting into a, a killing machine, right? they know about racing, don't they? That's how you met them. Yeah, they're very familiar they with racing. They're track and whatnot. Do they, you know, if they care so much about Tyler, don't they know that he's got to get, and then he's sitting there crying over their daughter? Yeah, he was crying Forget about it. Look, and let's talk about any team. It he doesn't matter, man, woman. If you're on a team and your other teammate is someone who races for a living, the day of the race, you don't get in their head. So if you're the wife or the girlfriend of a person who races an 800-horsepower vehicle with other people on the track that can die, get out of their head. Exactly. That's like exactly. a boxer. Are you going to mess with your boxing husband the day of the prize fight? What the heck is you wrong? Know, I would say that the mother on the other, you know, the, her, her mother, uh, you know, should tell her, what are you doing? The kid's going to get in a killing machine. You no, know, her, mom, her, mom, her mom's exact words were, if I have to come pick her up, I will do I heard that. I heard that. And that's all crap. <laughs> all right, I heard you tell her before. You know, that kid's got to get into a killing machine, and you're going to let your daughter mess that up since you even know about racing. Come on. Forget about right. it. And this kid's crying over her. All right, Tony like, Soprano. You know Good talking to you, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Come what on, are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the mother. The Bubba Radio Network will return after this.